Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger, my friends. We got quite a bit of news as far as Mortal Kombat 1 Chaos Reigns goes. The new expansion adding a lot of new characters and a lot of new features. Earlier today we had a combat cast and the crew over at NetherRealm Studios basically just gave us a big info dump on a lot of things that are going to be available with the game. And in this video, well hey, let's go over it. So coming with the expansion Chaos Reigns on September the 24th, here's a couple quick ones. One, online practice mode. You could argue it's overdue, and I wouldn't disagree necessarily, but hey, it's finally coming to the game. Online practice is a very strong quality of life feature for those people just looking to improve. And hey, it's finally coming. Awesome. The Warrior Shrine is finally gonna be a thing. So what is it exactly after taking up your menu spot for over a year now? So the Warrior Shrine is basically going to be a top five of each season of the Combat League. So whoever the top five players of whatever particular season of Mortal Kombat 1, hey, they're going to be immortalized in the Warrior Shrine. Now, it's not nothing. It is cool. I like that, you know, the people that got to the high ranks get to have theirs, right? But considering it's been on the menu for so long and so much wild speculation over the last year of what it could be, I do feel a little let down, I'm not gonna lie, but for the people that'll show up, I suppose it is pretty cool. There's gonna be four all new stages added to the game and each of those stages will have multiple variations like some of the existing stages already do. And as for the existing stages, Five already existing stages will also get additional Chaos Reigns variations on top of what we already got. So stage-wise, we're doing pretty good. For animalities, everyone's getting an animality, and when they say everyone, they mean everyone is getting one. So yes, even the guest characters like Omni-Man, Homelander, Conan the Barbarian, the T-1000, everyone is going to be getting animalities. So that is pretty cool. And for the guest characters, I guess they're going to be extra messed up because... Well, it's just going to be extra weird, isn't it? And there's still more, so let's keep going here. So the classical Towers of Time have returned. We're changing up the experience a bit as it stands in Mortal Kombat 1. So normally the towers, uh, as they were in one of the maces, if you go in, like, say, Invasions mode, that is scrapped in the more classical Towers of Time with, you know, timed events, all that, are here now in just its own thing, pickable on the main menu. So for those of you who liked it more, how it worked in, say, Mortal Kombat 11, hey, there you go. It's going to be that way. And also, for a lot of the seasonal content, you know, seasonal content is missable content that will now be added to the towers. So grind away and get earning. So like MK11 here, uh, as far as points go, the higher your points at the end of a certain tower, like a seasonal tower, the better your reward. And there's a lot more. Uh, Dragon Shrine is going to get updated with new cameo brutalities. The seasonal store will have new brutalities for everyone, two per character, there forever as well. So you don't got to worry about those rotating out. So if you miss stuff, you can get the old stuff. And there's a lot of new stuff coming as well. Lots of stuff, lots of content. So right there, that's lots of good stuff, right? But we got a lot more to go through. They gave us some ideas at some balance changes. We've already seen a few, but there's even more to go through. And also a bit of more of an in-depth look at Noob Cybot himself, which we'll go through after that. So as far as balance changes go, they gave us little vignettes of the characters and just showcasing some of the new things that they can do. And there is some pretty interesting stuff here. So in our first clip, we have Garrus versus Omni-Man and both getting changes for the better. I'm sure there's going to be some nerfs too. Uh, they usually don't highlight nerfs, although we did catch one for Tanya last time around. So say Garrus here, the buff. So after he gets the clone going on, he does four, three ground bounces and I guess this whole extended sequence going on, right? Because uh, the buff here is four, three absolutely does not ground bounce currently. You do it and it just splats and that to me was always fair enough because it's a very long range uh, under 20 frame overhead so that was kind of good enough and now with clone up or like any ambush cameo really the fact you get combo ability after the fact pretty big deal i would say legitimately a very large buff for garrus and similar style buff for omni-man his forward two now also ground bounces and he gets a full corner combo for it as it currently stands, it is also just a splat, no combo ability possible. So now added combo potential on moves that never had it before, like I would say that's a fairly big deal. 
Next up, we have all new cameo moves, because pretty much every cameo is getting a new move, it looks like. And for cameo Kung Lao, it looks like Orbiting Hat is returning. So it's a summon call, but it kind of has to be. It's very strong, right? And the hat just orbits around you, and if it hits, it puts you into a stun slash combo okay state, and you can do whatever after the fact. Basically, while the hat is live, you have to play defense, or if you get tapped, it's full combo. So you can't really afford to play around with it, which means more pressure for you. So that's a pretty good new move. Also with the new moves, how about regular Kung Lao? Regular Kung Lao also has an all new move as well and seems to be pretty all right. So it looks like we got air hat toss. And this looks like really good for a lot of reasons. One, it eats up a lot of real estate, right? Higher angle, right? Harder to jump. He also seems to move backwards while doing it, which means uh, it could be pretty good runaway. The enhanced version, as we see here, also usable in combos and just floats up the enemy super high so he can recombo after the fact. So it just seems really strong all around. In this clip, there's some stuff we've seen before, like Shujinko getting an all new crumple state. Also new though is Shang Tsung getting a new string. So we have a new double hitting low string in forward three, four. More strings, more better. Also not shown, but apparently Shujinko has another new move where he can kick into a true overhead. Also Shang being Shang, more kind of just tricky stuff here. Notice how he turns into Sonya a cameo. So now Shang Tsung can turn into whatever your opponent's cameo is, not his cameo, the opponent's cameo and do one of their moves. So depending on the match, depending on the options, his combo routes can get pretty crazy here. He's doing Sonya's scissor attack, but uh, anything's possible really. That's gonna be pretty cool. And in our last clip provided, Takeda 4-2, now special cancelable. Really good to have huge range pokes that are special cancelable. And the new Sonya cameo attack that we've seen before. And hey, that's lots of cool stuff, right? They're kind of going in, all these new cameo attacks, all these new uh, balance changes. Uh, existing characters are also either getting all new strings or all new attacks as well, right? Uh, all new specials in some cases. So they're adding a lot to this expansion. I'm sure the patch notes list, whenever it drops, is going to be very, very expansive. And I did mention Noob Saibot. They give us a bit of a look at the character and he can do some pretty fun things. So for Noob Saibot, he's got a lot of the classic things you would expect, right? Does he have the teleport? Yes, sir, he does. And yes, air teleport goes up then through the ground to hit you with the teleport. So no going down to the ground and getting hit by a projectile that you're trying to beat. And EX teleport portals the enemy, meaning you get free combo ability. You can juggle them after the fact. Combo ability with Noob Saibot is gonna be uh, pretty easy overall. His projectile, which we saw in the trailer, uh, still very much applies to debuff, which we talked about in that trailer breakdown. One new bit of info though, that debuff is applied if it hits at all, meaning if you block it, it will still be applied. Considering, you know, if the debuff is live, you get to detonate it, that means you can't interact with this projectile at all. You can't even afford to block it or you're gonna have the threat of the detonate always being on you. So as far as projectiles go, this is very, very powerful. And as we saw in the trailer as well, enhanced projectile just makes the clone do it and heavily delays it. And as explained, debuff working how it is, you could basically do the EX, force the opponent into a block string and guarantee it to hit. So very powerful tool all in all. Now keeping the longer range stuff going here, portal still very much a thing. It is aimable, so we have close, medium, and far versions. It working the way it does means you always pretty much win a trade when it comes to a fireball war, so always powerful. And here's the fun one. So we have tackle. We already saw that. That's pretty cool. Tackle has always been strong enough for Noob Cybot. And enhanced tackle hits you with the monkey flip, so it just gives straight up combo ability. So that's good. But on top of tackle, we also have slide. So our full screen presence options for Noob Cybot, very strong. Slide, well, he is Sub-Zero after all, right? He knows a thing or two about sliding. But the thing about this is he actually has multiple versions of slide. So there's a bit of a cooldown on the shadow, if you will. So if the shadow's on cooldown, then he himself does the slide instead. And this is how it's gonna be for several moves. This is an actual gameplay mechanic that he can do the move the clone does if the clone is currently on cooldown. More clone moves, we have up kick, which we saw in the trailer. Enhanced up kick is like just a proper juggle starter. Both are juggle starters, really. Just one juggles better than the other, I guess. We also have clone sweep. This is a special move, not his regular sweep. EX clone sweep is his armored move. 
Then we go to even more aerial stuff. So we saw aerial clone dive kick, and that's gonna be a good move. Like, unless the frame data is awful, it's gonna be a good move. But we have more than just that. Since it's a clone, right? This is another move with cooldown. So if the clone's on cooldown, then Noob himself will do the actual dive kick, which is really cool. And this is indeed all leading up to a big reveal, so keep following along with me on this one. Also, multiple dive kicks! So we have a more like horizontal dive kick, more straight along path. And we also have dive kicks that are directly downwards. And as you can see here on regular hit, it kind of splats out the enemy. The enhanced version of this creates a stun okay state that you get combo ability from. So he's controlling basically every possible lane that there is to play in. He's basically like the ultimate counter zoner effectively. And then finally for specials, he has this move Embrace Chaos. This is a once per game move, not per round, per game move. And this basically makes him like a boss character for a very short amount of time. He gets an all new move for one. This is a projectile, a low hitting, must be blocked low projectile, which just automatically teleports you to the enemy or teleports the enemy to you rather. And you get combo ability, no bar needed. And no meter needed is sort of the theme here. As it turns all your clone moves into portal slash teleport moves. It'll always just hit the enemy and then teleport them right to you. Slide, tackle, whatever it may be, dive kick in the air. They're all combo okay moves. So you can get full combo ability without spending a drop of meter. And of course, if you spend meter, then you're gonna do even more damage. Like even noobs basic back throw, just a regular throw. Normally get your damage, that's it, that's all. But here, cause the buff is live, portal. And then you get a full combo, full combo after basic throw, no cameo needed, nothing. That's kind of big. The thing though is once per game buff, right? And it is a fairly short time for what it is, right? You can be very explosive in that time, but it's not forever. And after that, for the rest of the round, it is once per game, but only for the rest of the round, you lose the clone. That's it. So all your special moves that use a clone, you just do the base version where you yourself do the move. And all the strings that use the clone, well, the clone's not there anymore. Either you'll do a replacement move, like this is the base uppercut without the clone, right? Or you just can't do the string. So you gotta do it when you feel you're really gonna win that round. So potential game winning buff, absolutely, but you better win while the buff is live. Otherwise the rest of the round's gonna be pretty rotten for you. You gotta win while you have those teleports ready to go. Also to note his fatal blow is tracking. So it's another really good counter zoner style move. Basically don't toss out anything a little too obvious from full screen. And speaking of full screen actually, hey, Fatal Blow, wait what, Sector started it. So Sector is now like Motaro. Sector can be the one that begins the Fatal Blow. Having a Fatal Blow like Noobs where it's tracking and I can hold you hostage from full screen where you can't afford to hit a button is always huge, right? And now Sector basically gives that ability to anybody. So say you have like a slow and bad fatal, which is more characters than not, let's get honest, right? You're now a threat anywhere on screen with your fatal blow thanks to Sector, so that helps out big time. Regardless of who you are, you can now hold the opponent hostage full screen with your fatal blow. So that's a huge value add for the character. And like Sector's not bad, right? Like he's already pretty all right getting buffed, so uh, we'll see how it goes out long term, but like I think that's pretty significant. Like I see Noob with a tracking fatal and you know, it's kind of like MK11, right? Track fatal, like you can't afford to hit a button. Uh, the only thing is just depending on how fast, if it's too slow, then I guess we'll see. But uh, for noob, for sector, like that just makes fatals way stronger as a reactionary move. And this footage here you're seeing interspersed throughout the video, like Havoc also getting big buffs, right? We've covered those in previous videos. So lots of good changes are happening. This is gonna be significant, right? It's not just the balance patch. Like as much as I like season two of Street Fighter VI, it was just the balance patch, right? We also have lots of all new moves, both for the existing characters and the cameos as well. And that is gonna change and shape up the game just as much as any balance change would. Basically, exciting times are ahead. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this is going. Mortal Kombat 1 has had some shakiness to it. I think most people would agree but it seems to be going in the right direction and that looks pretty fun. That all said though, that is the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Mortal Kombat.